Hello there. Remember the little bugs too I reviewed not long ago? Well, I thought let's talk about the easy ways of updating it because it was really nice to fly, really easy, but the Wi-Fi video was a bit lacking. What I always have around, just in case I've got something to stick it on, is one of these TXO3s. I always have a spare now because they're so easy just to stick onto something. So I literally intend to take the little TXO3 and pop it somewhere on the nose of the aircraft like this just to give me some sort of view, see how it is. And I'm just going to stick a 1S battery and pop it all on there basically and see how it is. So let me do that and let's get flying and see what happens. Well welcome to the field. Well I'm here for the second time because I came here before and it's a 45 minute round trip on foot and I forgot my fat shocks. <laughs> here I am again, we've had another slot. So what we've got is the little bugs too, right here. And you'll notice it's got on it a little TXO3. It's literally just uh, rubber banded onto a one cell battery with a bit of Velcro there just to keep it on. And uh, yeah, it's keeping it really simple. Let me take it off again, just seeing how it feels. It's a little bit wobbly, but <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it won't move around that much, but you can never tell, can you? Okay, so let's get in the air and see what happens. I'm taking off and flying here using the GPS mode as you'll, you'll see it sort of ground to a halt if uh, I let go of the throttle at all. And it's kind of a weird day. The sun's been out and now it's really quite grey so it's not not the best on this little TXO3 camera but it's, uh, it doesn't do a bad job does it? It's only literally um, velcroed on with a rubber band around it. And it gives kind of an interesting view. It's kind of not quite central and it's very wide angle. So normally I'd be complaining about the distortions, but where you've got the sort of legs and the props in view, it kind of does a little bit better. It kind of keeps the view in context and stops your eyes being drawn to anything else happening. So I thought we'd just try and get along there and see if, it, uh, if it's going to go okay to the end of the field. And it's a little bit weird flying with this because it's self-leveling and the altitude holds itself. What I'm doing here, I'm just letting it wait in the sky. I'm taking my goggles off. I'm having a quick look down at the controller just to make sure that the signal's good. And at this point, I think we're at something like 319 meters and it's still got a full signal. So I'm just letting it sit there in the sky, making sure it holds position okay. And everything looks absolutely fine. It's absolute breeze to fly. The only thing that's weird for me, um, so normally I'm flying, you know, you sort of race style quads. When I when I do fly the NASA quad, it's more of a very much a sort of gentle push around the sky. So I'm trying to kind of fly this fast, but obviously the controls are different. Whereas you get used to the stabilization and the fact that you just have to keep your finger in one place instead of um, just, you know, pushing it forward and letting it just go. The really weird thing is because how it um, holds the altitude uh, that you're not sort of busy on the throttle stick sort of guiding it along it kind of does its own thing that that's weird so trying to drop really quickly in that was was really quite odd indeed so what I thought I'd try and do is let's see if I could do the normal sort of proximity fly along the trees as I do and, and go through the trees at the end. I still don't want to get too close to those trees just in case it hit its return to home and went straight up and, and got the trees. I'm also I'm struggling to fly my normal altitude to get really nice and low because as I mentioned that the floral stick really is weird <laughs> for this sort of thing. I mentioned that the wind was up and going this way back to myself is against the wind and that's when we get a little bit more shake. I'm pretty sure this could be fixed up a little bit better by a, a decent mount point. I mean there's always going to be a an amount of shake in this thing as well on this little CMOS sensor that's not mounted expertly but you know this is a, a very simple let's just shove this on and see what happens sort of idea and, and for that point of view I think it's working really well. The view I'm getting out of the quad is slightly weird, but absolutely easy peasy to fly. And uh, I'm in, well, they call it gesture mode, attitude mode, I would call it, going back to the NAS days. 
uh, and it's absolutely great fun. I didn't really notice there was a speed difference between GPS and gesture mode. They they all seem to do the same amount of speed, but of course you won't come to that incredible halt if you just take your finger off. At least it'll carry on sort of drifting along for you. And and just to prove things, I thought I know I put the uh, the GPS out so I could just maybe record a fly past. And again, I can just let it go and sit in the air quite happily and it holds its position really nicely, even in this quite strong wind. That's just shown here. I don't think my fly pass was particularly good, but at least I got it sitting there in the sky so I could uh, see it hold its position. And it did very well. All in all, for the flying experience, I really can't fault it too much. I got less flight time out of it like this because I literally had my um, thumb all the way forwards every time getting max speed. So I got about 10 minutes out of the little battery. But you know, for a simple 20 quid upgrade, just putting uh, the little camera VTX on there, the uh, TX03 and you know a 1S battery which is cheap as chips, can't be bad can it? And uh, works a lot better than the Wi-Fi. Anyway, I will catch you next one. Bye for now.